Everybody, welcome back to the podcast. It's episode twenty three point five, and the point five is for me being absolutely ridiculously dumb and doing about I don't know the first 10, 15 minutes without pressing record. Yes, it is a old story that I have done many a times. I don't know. It's just the software here. Sometimes I get so excited. I just want to get going and uh, I know I just don't press the button. I don't know. But we got something new for you guys here. We have a co-pilot here for the foreseeable future. It is my longtime best friend, Mike the Hammer Benefield. I don't know. I didn't say hammer the first time, but it just feels like you should have like a, a middle nickname called the, the hammer. hammer. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. But how you doing? I'm doing all right. Excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna have a, 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 a the same conversation we just had. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh my god! You know, I have done this a couple of times, and the one time <laughs> I, I I wanted to get the episode done, and it was like one in the morning, and I'm like, I'm just gonna do this, and I got about 45 minutes into that thing, and I was so tired, and I looked down, and I'm like, oh my god. How did I not notice this thing is not recording? And it was like a quarter to two. And I just, I'm like, I, I would cry, but I'm so tired. I I no. just, that's when Done. you just shut everything down. I went to bed and I did it the next day. And it was, I'll be honest with you, that first 45 minutes was a lot better than when I did the next day. But I didn't care. I was so ticked <laughs> off. I, was, I thought when I woke up the next day, it'd be no big thing. But I, I woke up, I'm like, God damn it, man. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with me? But it's so easy to do. I, you know, I'm in, in right obviously, here, and right here in front of me, I'm I'm looking at the thing, and and it, it it this big red bar comes across the screen when when we're recording, and nothing. It'd been gray, and I'm looking at my computer the whole time, and I'm like, it no, was great. it seems like fine to me. Oh, <laughs> Maybe you're colorblind. <sighs> I can see the red now. <laughs> so. A little background on my friend Mike. He's not a collector of video games, but he is a gamer um, as much as we can be. Um, we were talking about um, the, uh, you know, the challenges of raising a family and working full time and finding that time to game, especially with, you know, the way game games are today and how long and big they are. And, you know, it's almost... I mean, it, they're beautiful. I mean, these. I mean, that's why these games take four years to make. But it's unfortunately for a lot of us, we just don't have that time. Um, but but Mike and I, I remember our real first me and you gaming was in the in your Funko Land days, trying to sell everybody that extended warranty, like they still do. It's GameStop now. Yeah. But me and oh, you yeah. on sixty four, just playing battle mode in in Mario Kart 64. It was oh, yeah. good times. Oh, that's fun, man. Arcade style games. Quick right. plays. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the it, the funny thing is when I started collecting games, um a lot of people really dump on the on the 64. Cuz it and I will say I I don't, I, I don't know how you could do that. What, one one word, goldeneye. Right. Oh yeah. You know what it is? It doesn't. The, the graphics don't age well, and Not true. and yeah. you know, and you could say that about um, the uh, uh, original PlayStation. You know, people tend to forget that. You know, those things were. I mean, all those three D graphics were just getting started and back then. I mean, those things looked amazing, and of course, of course, you know, compared to what it looks like now, I mean, it's no comparison i still think they look damn good i mean look at mario 64 i love mario 64. oh man i could pick that up today and i i think that still right you know there's not too many rivals out i don't there. think you can afford for uh, mario 64 we're gonna get to that here in a minute. okay all right 
But, you know, I even GoldenEye, one of my favorite games, or Mario Kart, right? Mm-hmm. Any of those top 10, you know, popular 64 games. Yeah. No, they still look good today. I think, it's, all, it's all relevant. Yeah. I think I think the 64 also takes it on the chin, too, because, you know, Nintendo was late to the game. They didn't want to go away from the carts, and they didn't want to go CD. So they like they didn't get the, the video, and they didn't get the, the CD quality graphics and voiceovers. The little movie clips. Yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah, and yeah. I get that. I get that. And, you know... I, I do think that probably the PlayStation overall was a better system, but I still I, I still love playing. But I think sixty four. I think even today Nintendo still kind of holds true to who they are. Oh yeah. And when back then, right? Yeah. It was cartoon. It was cartoon character Mario, you know, and and all those characters. A lot of the games that they pushed out mm-hmm. is focused around, and that's still the same today. See, right. And this is kind of once I mean, and it's funny because we didn't talk about this the the first go around, and it, it's actually a point that I want to bring up. But I want to talk to you about the the new the new uh, switch that's coming out because I think we both are kind of scratching our heads, going, "Is this really something that we needed?" You know, for three hundred fifty bucks, is is a better screen, and it is it is a really nice screen, and extra speakers on there are really going to do it for us. No, no. Not really. Am I going to dump uh, another three hundred plus fifty to replace what I have for that value? Heck no. My kids aren't even going to know, and that's who p- primarily plays them. Yeah. Right. That take it out of the dock, that run with it, play with it, drag it, drag it through the dirt. Yeah, I'm a casual. I'll jump on there, but it's it is definitely not worth that upgrade. Not in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think so either. And. You know, for the longest time, I, a lot of what Nintendo does stuff like they 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 come out with stuff and then and like the 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 minis or the classics or whatever they call them, you know, and not making enough for everybody. Like you could print money, and they're just like, now nah, we're only gonna have it for this amount of time. It's like why? Right. You know how much money everybody wants one. Why are you making it so hard for people to get these things? And then it's like this. So. Here's my thought. I was thinking about this the other day. I think this was actually after I talked about this originally, but it was, or maybe maybe I talked about it last time. I don't know. I can't remember. It all runs together. Anywho, uh, you know, Nintendo has had that that corner of to where they're like, well, we're not necessarily going to go for you know an even par with you know Sony and Microsoft as far as like you know graphics and all this other stuff. We're gonna have our kind of our own corner, or whatever. But now I think, and that's been fine. I love, and I love that with Nintendo. And Nintendo, the Switch is by far probably right now my favorite system that I have. I just love it. But part of me feels like, hey, you know, maybe it's time for Nintendo, especially maybe maybe not with the Switch here necessarily, but that next thing, maybe it's time to be on par with these guys. You can still do what you're doing as far as have it family friendly and whatever, but. You know, I think if the Switch has showed us anything with how much people were hoping that they were going to make it more beefier and come out with a 4K graphics or whatever. Maybe it's time to let's come out with a system that's going to really kick some ass and, and, and light the fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to go at it like you're going to compete against those guys. But why not? Yeah, I don't think it's compete. You don't want to replicate it. Right. Because what's done is done. Market's saturated there. But you don't want to produce this $350 upgrade that's, in my eyes, useless. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but, you know, I'm just saying, you know, if you go, like, whatever comes after the Switch, you know, the, the Wii K or whatever. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I mean, they come up with all this stuff. But, you know, let's let's make it let's make it a powerhouse here. Let's go for it. Why not? I mean, imagine how good they are with what they do now and then you know let's go for it why not i mean i don't know i mean you know nintendo has harebrained ideas and they're a hit or miss yeah right you know we extremely i think successful not being a collector like you but i mean that was that's been out there everybody had a wii hell i still play with it Mm. and then you got the wii u kind of a flop 
I don't know what your opinion is, but I think, I you know, generally speaking, yeah, I've never a flop. You know, right? I've, I've I've never had the opportunity to the to, to play one, but I know that like you know the Wii U is kind of I think it's going to be like the new era uh, Dreamcast. You know, the oh, Dreamcast sure. was kind of oh, sure. considered a flop by Sega. You oh, know, yeah. their you know their last console, but like. You know, it, people love collecting for it. You know, people love that. And I'm kind of seeing that with the Wii U now, where people kind of have, you know, are kind of like, hey, you know, this thing was actually not that bad. The only thing with the Wii U, sure. in that respect, I'll say, though, is it had such a short lifespan that they took a lot of those games and they put them on the Switch. So it's kind of like, do I really need yeah. to go? I mean, even as a collector, I'm kind of like, you know, I already got like a thousand systems I'm collecting for. Do I really need another one? I probably don't, but I'm not telling well, you see, if I find one for a good price that I won't pick oh, it up. Oh, sure. But I think Nintendo recognized very early on, okay, it's it's not it's not doing well. Let's switch this to the Switch, right? Yeah. But I think where Nintendo needs to go, and you look at all the, everything that they've come out with, the Wii and every one of these iterations has been kind of groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. It's so much different than Xbox or PlayStation. You know, I look at things like, you know, I work in transportation, truck drivers. I look at technology and, and vehicles and things. And where do kids take the switch, right? They're on road trips. They're out in the backyard, things like that. What, what if you start working with these, you know, manufacturers that put the TVs in the cars, in the trucks, the mm -hmm. pop-down DVD players? Yeah. What if you had a pop-down switch plug-in? You know, and you make it a family environment like an SUV or minivan. All right, you know, things like that, I think, my personal opinion, yeah. Nintendo is going to groundbreak something new that nobody's thinking about today because yeah. that's kind of their track record. Yeah, I didn't like that. I do like that with them because, they, you know, they're they're hit or miss, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's they fine. They take a chance. They do take a chance, yeah. you know, because, and which is, you know, in today's, you know, day and age is, is could be rare because I mean, you're not really seeing, you know, Sony or Microsoft doing and nothing against them, you know, but you know, I mean, out of the, the big three, Nintendo's probably the one that really lets it hang out. Exactly. And, and yeah. you know, sometimes it's, they hit a home run and sometimes not so much, but you know, now, now if the switch hand had been done being had, boy, <laughs> Black Hawk Down. <laughs> if the Switch hadn't been in success like it is now, uh, you know, I think this would have been a different conversation. Sure. But I don't know. I like it. So what are we going to talk about here, Mike? Um, well, we're going to talk about an auction for a Mario 64 game that was insane. And everybody that's listening to this knows what I think about the, you know, these auctions and these games getting graded. And I, I I'm, I'm, we're going to let Mike know about, about some of this. Cause it's just, it's just, I think it's one of the dumbest things in, in the gaming collection world today. Just my opinion. Sega is also getting sued for supposedly a rigged arcade machine and it's and it's funny as hell because if you really think that this machine is really doing gonna let you win because of your skill then you're out you're out of your mind you haven't been in a in an arcade lately <laughs> um and netflix is supposedly talking about getting into streaming gaming uh which is great because it worked out so well for google stadia so we're going to talk about that, and there's really not too much to talk about that because uh, there's really not a lot of information that's been released. It's more or less been leaks. And we will talk a little bit uh, on the back end here about uh, a new gaming handheld that looks like a Switch, but it's actually a Steam handheld, and that's called the Valve Steam Deck. And that that dish dropped uh, a couple days ago, and actually this morning was the pre-orders for that, and, you know... If you guys keep track of how easy it is to do pre-orders with anything nowadays, you kind of know how that that train probably went. But okay, so this next topic was gonna originally was gonna be for something else. At the beginning, was it last week? The middle of last week or something like that? 
I seen that a it was a sealed Zelda card. Well, okay, let's let's back up here. So basically, what's going on here, Mike, Michael, is we have Heritage Auctions who auctions off all these games. There's a company called WADA, and and they're only like three years old, and they will grade games, and usually it's sealed games in the box, and then they put them in this plastic container. Oh, like, yeah. Just like baseball cards. Sure. Yeah, right. right. But, you know, unlike baseball cards, these things are meant to be played, and it just drives me nuts, but whatever. And then they give it a grade, you know, 9.0, 8.0, whatever, A++. So now we've had in about the last year, year and a half, especially the last year, these games coming in and getting sold for like crazy amounts. Like we had a Super Mario Brothers earlier this year that went for like $660,000, which is ridiculous. I don't I don't care what condition this thing is. Mm-mm. So then last week, it started off with, oh, a sealed Zelda cartridge, original Zelda game, sold for $870,000. And I was like, whoa, what is going on here? And then I'm like, well, we're, we're going to talk about this, yeah, right? right. So then a couple days go by, and then another auction was held. And it was a Super Mario 64 sealed. For it went for one point five million dollars, and y'all done lost your minds. Because if I don't, I do not care if you have a few money. If you put money, come on, come that's on. just dumb, ridiculous. I mean, I mean, come on, that's cra- That's as crazy as people uh, with Pokemon cards with the you know Charmanders buying them for you know a million bucks. That, that's insane, man. It ain't. Think of what you can put that money on. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, I don't have a million dollars. Oh, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't know if you know that. That's stupid money. <laughs> I mean, you, you, yeah. You, so, but here's, okay. So let me, because I have a, I have a problem with WADA and Heritage Auctions, because I kind of feel like maybe something's going on here. I'm not the only one that's kind of thought. I, for legal reasons, I'm not saying it, but, you know, I, normal people aren't going to slap down money for that. That's ridiculous. So this is the description that Heritage Auctions had on this. This cracks me up. This is how ridiculous <laughs> it is. It says, the cultural significance of this title and its importance to the history of video games is paramount. And the condition of this copy is just so breathtaking that we were, that we really are at a loss here. And that's Heritage Auctions. What are you talking about? Let me tell you something. I I I, I have me and you played it back in the day. Sixty uh, Mario sixty four. Oh, sure. I bought the anniversary uh, thing on the Switch version of it, and I I played the hell out of it. I love the game. But what are they talking about? When I think of the history of video games and what they mean, I'm not. I, I'm Mario not thinking 64, of a perfect box. With the cellophane all over but it, but even and, but like Mario know. sixty four, I'm not thinking like that wouldn't be my first choice in my head. Going, oh no, the importance of video gaming history. What do you? I, uh, okay, so I mean, I, I, no, I mean it was the first three D Mario game out there, but I mean, okay, I mean Super Mario World was the first sixteen bit. I, I, you know, I, I, Super Mario Brothers on Nintendo. Crazy money, but maybe. But yeah, you talk Mario sixty four. No, that's that's insane. I just, I just, I, I, I always break it down to this. I think you're crazy if this is a, like an actual genuine thing that someone plopped money down from. Either that happened, or you know, people always talk about well, maybe it's investors trying to get ahead of the game here. But I mean, I don't see. Unless you're a really poor investor, how much meat is on the bone after you spend 1.5? No, that's crazy. You know what I mean? That's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, what are we talking about? Unless it's like one of those guys from Dubai that just yeah. burn a hundred, like millions of dollars just because they can. Oh, yeah. yeah. You I mean, know what will happen in five or ten years? Someone will pay a million dollars for Grand Theft Auto, original copy. Well, you know, where does it end? 
I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, because for a while with collecting and buying these things, and this was before like heritage auctions and what I got a hold of this, but like, you know, back in the day when Nintendo had the, uh, you know, the, the world championships and they had the, you know, only so many of the competition cards, the gray ones with the white label. And, you know, those were going for 25000 But that's because, I mean, those were really, really rare. And then they had the gold version that you could get through Microsoft Power, and those were even more rare. But but that's, they're rare, and it's a piece of history. Whether or not I would spend the 25000 yeah, no. But that's a far cry from, like, and by the way, those are now around 100000 mm. supposedly. But... You know, when when I see, you know, Mario 64 at a, a, a million dollars, I, 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 you know, or Zelda at, you know, 800,000, I'm like, I, these are things that are made to be played. First of all, I think when they put them in these cases, that's ridiculous. You were talking about mm-hmm. like a baseball card. I get that because mm-hmm. you could still flip it back and forth. You could still see it. You're basically, you're doing it to protect it. Yeah, you just don't touch it with your fingers. I mean, what else can you do with uh, a card, right? Yeah, I get it. There's nothing else to do with it. Yeah. But, like, I I mean, and to each their own, you know? I mean, I know I'm coming off kind of, you know, hardcore about, you know, I think this is dumb. I do think it's dumb, though. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. Especially at this point, it's ridiculous. What, what gets me is, you know, and I've seen it, I, I, you know, these games that have high extreme value because they're kept in the package. Do you think the original owner kept that thing in the package? Heck no, right? I mean, this is this is someone that went out and bought it casually for their kids or something and stuck it in a damn closet and it's stuck there for 20, 30 years. Yeah. yeah to your point, need meant to be played, right? These things weren't meant to be collector items. I don't think. I mean, not like, not like oh, this. Oh, heck no, man. I, look at Atari and stuff. My folks grew up back in those days and Pong and stuff. You think anybody in their right mind when a system comes out says, you know what? I'm going to keep this perfect in the package back in the 70s well, because not, I'm no. going to be a million dollars. No, not back know? then. No, I was going to say, oh. now, they, now they will. Oh, now they will. <laughs> but no, in the 70s, 80s, heck no, man. I'm going to go out and buy everything, as many games as I can now that are yeah. sad because who knows? Am yeah. I going to get two million in oh, 20 years? Hell no, man. And, and even back then, even those folks we're still putting the baseball cards on the spokes of your your tires on your wheels yep. so these are accidental million dollar fines that the collector market is driving up the demand and that's see, my opinion yeah. and see that's the thing because you'll you'll in in you know you see it with everything it's like well you know if there's a market for it if somebody will buy it bingo yes yes and no because i think at a certain point for that it's like who's driving up this market is it really because you're not talking about like, oh, hey, one of these sold last year or five years ago for like, you know, 10000 and then a couple years later, 100000 No, it was just like, boom, 1.5 <laughs> out of the gate. And it's like, who is deciding this? And that's why I kind of wonder, like, because I know that there's been some connections between WADA grading them and what Heritage is doing and whether or not there's, is, there's money not actually being you know, going back and forth because, you know, they don't release who's, who the buyer is, which I, I, which is fine, whatever. But, you know, is there something going on? I don't know. I mean, cause it, it just feels like we're at the point to where it's like, I don't think it's an unreasonable question to be like, Hey, you know, is there something sketchy going on here? Or maybe not even sketchy, but it's just, cause I don't know who you'd be hurting there. I mean, unless, but you know, you are hurting because like then people like me or you come along and we're like, oh, we want to buy these games. And it's like, oh, well, now you got to spend a hundred bucks for the loose copy because when it should, when it like last month, it was only like $10 because this one went went for 1.5 million. And it's like, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's dumb. I, I do too. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, congratulations to whoever won that. Um, I, I, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I guess. I, they're probably happy already because they got the money to, yeah. to spend on yeah. that. Yeah. Shit. Right. So oh, Sega is getting sued for a rigged arcade machine. And, 
you know, when I seen this, I kind of looked at it and I, I almost was like, it's not even worth mentioning. But I just, because I feel like the people that are, are suing Sega are just out for a payday. But there, this thing has been in the news or in the courts on and off since 2013. And the machine is, hold on here, let me make sure I get this right. It's called Keymaster. And it's marketed as a, as a game of skill, but is more of a game of chance. At least that's what the lawsuits are saying. And there is a, well, there, besides the other lawsuits since 2013, there's a class action lawsuit that's been filed in California for $5 million. Okay, so I, I had to look up this machine to see what it looked like. Well, I, I it, there was actually a picture in the article. And right away you look at this machine and you're going, yeah, who, who's, who? You look at this machine and going, yeah, you're not gonna, this isn't a, a machine of skill. You know, you walk in the arcades now or you or or the the games that are in the the lobby at like a, uh, the movies and you see these machines all the time and they'll have like a GoPro in there and like a, I don't know like a, a MP3 machine or or sometimes you know an iPad mm -hmm. and so it but I, you, you know you look at these things and you're going you know of course it's rigged of course it's rigged all of these things are we we just got home from the wilderness in the dells and they had an arcade there and i went into it and it was like machines like this they didn't have this particular machine but machines like this do the whole thing there was like maybe actually two video game machines and there was all this stuff and it's like all you're doing you know that these things are pre-programmed to only win so often that's how they're making their money you know and just and, like a casino but oh yeah well yeah now yeah. see the way that some of these lawsuits have won in the past is because you know they are marketing it as you know you can win this it's a game of skill and it's not chance yeah right but it is a chance yeah shame on them but shame on the people if you really walked up to this thing and we're disappointed because you kept losing because you felt it was rigged. Of course it's rigged. All of those different kind of machines are rigged. Who who thinks that they're not? Any machine. Go to a carnival. Yes. All of them are. Oh, they're, they're so straight with you. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, come, look, I remember you at going to carnival, <laughs> going to Six Flags with you. And, and, you know, especially you, you'd hit those basketball games and be like, Jesus, here he goes. You know you're going to be there for at least a half hour. Oh, because... There's like a damn millimeter <laughs> difference between the ball and the hoop. Because they... those balls are overinflated, man. Uh, they hit one little thing. They're bouncing out of control. Yeah, oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's the same thing. And, yeah, it's it's no different here. I mean, of course, I mean, if, they're, if people are winning this game nonstop – and they're they're giving out you know GoPros and, and iPads. Well, they're not going to be earning money. No, yeah, especially at a dollar. Pretty, a, pretty damn simple. A dollar a pop. Yeah, I, I, just like the casinos. <laughs> yeah, and it, and I, I want to look here because yeah, because it said well, so they're not they're only suing. Well, they're not only suing Sega, but also the people that made made the machine too, which. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it. You know, they're, they're $5 million. That's a lot. Well, that's not just for one person. That's a class action lawsuit. But I mean, I mean. We're in a litigious society right now. Everybody wants to sue everybody for everything. You right? know, that's how I see it. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I want to see the people that are actually, the ones that are actually, you know, saying, hey, you know, maybe. You know, I'm pissed at this because I seen like the, I went when I went on on YouTube. I seen the guys that were like doing the videos and whatever, and they're like they're kids or you know young college. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I want to say that that somebody did win some money. I don't know how much though. They didn't really say, but I mean, good luck with that. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know how many people are being are being. Uh, 
represented in that class action lawsuit, but for five million, I mean, I don't know what you're going to get after the lawyer gets his. And this eighteen dollars and seventy two cents. Yeah, <laughs> I got the same thing. You were talking about like uh, Six Flags, right? Games growing up and stuff. I just got a class action lawsuit letter in the mail. Um, my wife Kelly, myself, and our two kids. We had season tickets. Probably, I don't know, two years ago. I didn't even look at this thing. I mean, I glanced at it, threw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> With the season tickets, you had to have your thumbprint put in this little mm -hmm. machine as you went mm -hmm. in, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this whole lawsuit and everything. And yeah, oh yeah, every person can get that. up to like $55, right? Yeah. You got to fill out this little form, send it in, whatever. You know, that, this stuff's getting ridiculous like i said very litigious society you hear about these multi-million dollar awards when it comes down to it especially these class action people are getting like 50 cents yeah you know well it's funny because i think we like for a year we had uh memberships to to massage envy here in town right you know before that one guy groped everybody up. I was just going to say, I know why you had. <laughs> yeah. That was at a different one. That was the right. one uh, further up. Yeah, you know? okay, okay. And uh, so anyway, um, and it was the way that they were um, charging or something. It was over. And I think, like, and we got something in the mail saying that we were part of it, you know, just because, you know, we had been members. And uh, I don't even know that we had to fill anything out. But I think in the end, like, I ended up getting like a check for like four seventy five or something. Like <laughs> that's four dollars seventy five yeah. cents. So, yeah, this so cost you more gas to go cash a damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, well, I'm like, okay, you know. Uh -huh. But yeah. yeah, I hey, you know, good luck with that. I mean, I know the judges probably have to look at this and 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 and, and go by the law, but I got to think that that some of these judges are just rolling their eyes once they see this machine. It's like you know. What in the hell Get the is heck this? Get out of here, yeah. you know? Yeah. Next. Yeah. Next. Yeah. I'm glad I pay those judges' paychecks for, uh, yeah, try, trying a, a case like that, right? So, Anywho. So, um, I, I kind of found this interesting. Um, and there's not much information about this yet. And actually, Netflix itself hasn't technically come out and confirm this this was kind of what they said in the bloomberg they said a person close to the situation and you know i i i tend to believe that this is probably in the works so netflix is is considering getting into uh the video games the streaming video games and one of the things that they've done is is hire a former uh electronic arts executive mike virtus to basically be the vice president uh, in game development and kind of help with the rollout of this and, and supposedly from what's being said um, or what's being leaked is that it's sometime within the next year which you know if if we haven't even officially heard of this I kind of if this is going to be true I'm kind of like yeah I don't know about that not really but I could see it yeah, it just feels like wouldn't we have heard about it already? I feel like maybe it's not saying that it's not going to happen, but maybe, maybe not within the next year. I don't know. Oh, and the and the other thing that's interesting too is that they said that they didn't plan on you know supposedly they didn't, they don't plan on doing a price increase, which is I oh, do yeah, not right. believe that because <laughs> those. Do you still have Netflix? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know how you know you get that notification every once in a while. Hey, you know it's going to be a little bit more now. Like, uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. and yeah. uh, but my thing with this is, so are you familiar with Google Stadia? Yeah, at all. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know Google Stadia has taken a lot of flack even before it came out, and. I don't think Google Stadia was a bad concept. I just don't think the infrastructure with the internet in the whole US of A is, is good enough to support support what they want to do there. And clearly it, it hasn't really been that case for them because I mean, I don't really think that Google is is supporting Stadia little if any at all anymore. So and I've seen, you know, other people try it out and, and, and have varying degrees of, of you know, 
success or whatever you want to say with it. And that's what kind of, but the, the one thing that I hear people all the time say with Stadia is like, well, you know, is this going to be like how Google handles a lot of other things? Because, you know, Google will come out with stuff and only support it for a little bit and then let it go. Like Google, they had that Google uh, Music or whatever, which is kind of like Chromecast, but it was a dongle. And that I think that lasted for like a second because I was actually thinking about getting it to stream music out to my speakers out back. But then like it just disappeared overnight. Boom. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting at here is, so Google got a lot of shit because they said, well, you know, Stadia is this going to be another thing that they don't support. So I don't understand what, what's going to be different here with Netflix, because I don't know about you, but Netflix doesn't necessarily support a lot of what they do. They, they, I mean, God, you know how many shows right now? that I've gotten into with them that I thought were really good. And then all of a sudden they're just like, Oh yeah. Like that yeah. Jupiter, uh, whatever it was with the superheroes. Oh God. I know. I, I told you, you should watch it. Um, Jupiter something. Yeah. Anyway. And I blew through that season first season and like in a day and a half, I loved it. Couldn't wait for the second one. Just got announced. It's canceled. I'm like god damn it man and this ain't the first one they they've been doing this a lot lately with and like people are like these are good shows but i guess they're just like if it ain't hitting that mark right off the bat they're just like gone so they kind of got an itchy trigger finger you know what i mean oh yeah they do yeah so well, it, they pump out a shit ton dude i know right a lot a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot a lot of good stuff a lot of yeah you know because 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 now oh, uh, hey, a lot of adam, adam sandler stuff uh, well <laughs> there's been one that was good with the the one with him and uh hey i like hubie halloween oh, oh my kids love that one it's an adam sandler one mm -hmm. really oh mm -hmm. god I, I, I don't think I've he ever comes out that. with one like a month on netflix nowadays anyway what was the one with him and uh and uh uh god damn it david spade the one where they knew each other back in the day, and then oh yeah, he was a cop, pretended to be a cop. cop I thought that, that was pretty. That funny, was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually surprised. Like, oh, uh, yeah. but anyway, anyway, so they're you know, I mean, we don't really know anything about this, but you know, supposedly this is going to be a thing, and and you know, from what it, they're saying, fairly soon within the next year. I don't know. I mean. Would you be interested in this? I mean, okay, let's let me let me rephrase that because obviously, if they add it on and I don't have to pay extra for it, yeah, I, I'll try it. Sure. What if they said for an extra three bucks a month or five bucks a month? Uh, they have to consider their demographics, right? I, I don't know. It depends on what they come out with. What the kind of gaming are they talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if a Netflix to me, this is just me, right? Where I would pay an extra two or three bucks. I remember Xbox Live many years ago, um, where there were a couple games that were designed around, I think massive multiplayer online, but game shows. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. You do this mass one versus 100, right? Man, you know, I think families can get engaged, things like that. I think Netflix is their marketing is kind of geared towards family because they have kid profiles they have you know and they release a lot of good stuff content for kids and adults everything kind of the whole gambit so they have to you know in my opinion they got to release a if they do anything like this their strategy has to be aimed towards families how do you get that family involvement that is much different than anything we've seen from google or any of the console platforms it's got to be something on, on, a, on that type of different level yeah. where I would show any interest. I mean, would you show any interest if it was like, well, I mean, I mean, if you already got, I, I guess my question is, let me get the question out first is, would you be interested in it? If it was more like, you know, like stadia, you know, where it's like all the new games that are coming out, but you're playing it streaming. But then I guess I kind of answer that question is if you already have, you know, xbox live why 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 it's, bother yeah exactly. but i mean if it was only like three or four bucks extra a month would i mean you think that would be worth it 
Or I don't think so, because I wouldn't pay it. Because I have Xbox Live, I have the Nintendo Switch, I have three Xbox Ones yeah. in the house with the kids. The the people that you would think you would be marketing to are people that don't have a console. Who's that? I I'd say it, grandparents. Yeah, <laughs> they have no interest in that stuff, right? They just want to go on Netflix and watch you know a couple series and a movie here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I, it all depends on what direction they take it. Right, yeah. who they market to, what type of "quote unquote" gaming that they're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's all I think, speculation. I think if they just add it on there without a price, well, without a price increase, needing a price increase, I, th I think it'll be okay. But then my only thing then is, is like, okay, so you don't the service isn't more, but now you know, am I going to have to buy a certain controller? Is that how, how are you going to stream that? Because, you know, with the Stadia, you know, you, you had to, to buy that certain dongle. I don't think I could use like one of my usual Chromecast dongles. Right. I have to use something that's a little bit beefier. So now am I going to have to buy some sort of hardware to be able to play? I mean, now, you know, we're just all, th this isn't even anything that's official yet. But I'm just saying it, it you know, I mean, you're going to need a controller of some sort. Right. You know, and and probably some sort of hardware because i would adventure to guess if they're gonna want to put like modern games on there we can just play it through your tv or your computer and it's going through them and not actually being run by your computer it's just being displayed then i gotta believe that you know there's gonna be some sort of hardware that you're gonna have to buy that that allows you to do that i don't know i don't know i just like i said i just seen it and in you know it's all very like you know, this could be a whole bunch of BS, but I just thought it was interesting because it was like, if they really are considering this, I'm like, didn't you guys just see what Google did? I mean, I have no doubt that one day that this may be the big, you know, we were talking about, you know, how we don't like digital, but you know, that just seems to be where it's going. And I have no doubt that one day the internet in the US will be good enough everywhere to Download, stream so, games, stream games like that, that, and that that's just it. You don't yeah. have to worry about buying a computer or video game console. It's just going to be a service. And, you know, as much as that does not appeal to me, you know, that's what our kids are growing up in. So, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be anything out of the ordinary for them. They're going to be like totally good with it. Yeah. So, okay. Well, good luck guys. Um, God knows, uh, you know, there's a lot of people trying to trying to dip their hand in that market. Um, so there was something interesting that that popped up, and uh, like everybody's, all, all the YouTubers started running away with this. So I figured I'd just give it a little bit of mention. But a new handheld uh, called the Valve Steam uh, Deck it just went up for pre-order today, which I guess was just a shit show. Um, <laughs> but basically what it is, it looks like a beefier, fancier version of the switch. Uh, and it's for steam games. So you have a steam account and, uh, it's for all new games. I don't, I don't have the specs and everything. I know they, I, I'm pretty sure they released them, but I just wanted to give a brief overview of this and it looks pretty badass. but man, this thing gets expensive. I want to say the most expensive one is somewhere around six hundred dollars for like five hundred some gigs, and really five hundred gigs isn't all that much. I mean, if you ain't starting off with a terabyte, especially for gaming, man. So I don't know. I mean, it it, it seems cool. It looks cool. It'll be interesting to see how it turns out. I. I it just, ain't six hundred bucks. No, cool. I mean, and they no. did have one ones for less. I think there was like a sixty four gigabyte one for, like I don't know, what two hundred bucks or three or something like that. And then I think there wow. was one in between that was like two hundred fifty six. Um, I don't know what you're gonna fit on there, especially if it's only a sixty four bit. And maybe I'm or sixty four gig. And maybe I, I heard that wrong. This is like I said, this is all very new. I just threw this in here to talk about it for a little bit, just to to for the shits and giggles, but I don't know. I mean, 
it, it, obviously a lot of people were interested in this because it was, it, I mean, tons of people got in on it to where everything was crashing, trying to get this thing pre-ordered. But man, it just feels like this is something that you, maybe you, you lay back and see how this thing turns out because especially for that moolah. Oh, for that money? Is it a flash in the pan? You don't know right now. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, you, it's cool. When you look at it, I mean, go online. It, it, if you guys go online and take a look at this thing, it, it looks it looks badass. But, again, I'm not a handheld guy, really. Um, right. I, 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 I don't know. And are you going to buy this for the kids? I don't think so. This thing, yeah, I see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, what, do, what the fuck do I know? Like, this thing sold out. And, like, for, <laughs> for everything. So, I mean... The big question is how many did they make to sell out? Well, I just wonder, too, you know, for my days in PC gaming, it's like, okay, so it's a Steam thing. Are you going to be able to upgrade this thing? Like, like, like upgrade the RAM or upgrade, uh, upgrade the memory? Because, you know, every year, these games, the specs on these games that are needed increases and increases and increases and if that's what it is or is it going to be something more like like a handheld sony system off of steam or where where it's the games are all made to be able to work on here i don't know i don't, I don't know how this is going right. to work right it's going to be interesting to see though i don't know there's God knows, and uh, for those of you listening, uh, especially the last episode, we know that there's a lot of people out there trying to uh, sell shit, um, and some of it I have money invested in. <clears throat> Poly Mega. Anytime, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, I think that's where we're gonna we're gonna put the fork in it right there. All right. This has been fun. Yeah. I think it went really well, both times. Yeah, well, we'll see what the people think. I know we, we kind of had a different conversation at the beginning, yeah. and then, and then yeah, I looked yeah. down and I'm like, hey, we're going to do that all over again yeah. because this thing was not running. No. And I love no. the look on your face, too. Like, I, I think you thought I was messing with you at first. I'm oh, yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, that's how we run. Look, at, I tell these people every time, I'm like, there's a reason why I call this the worst podcast ever. You know, because it quite well, maybe it probably. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, heard, I've heard some other ones that are just, you know, that could give me a run for my money. But that way, like when I really suck hard, it's like, yeah, but you know, I told you so. I told you right so. at the beginning. I told right you right so. off the bat. All right, guys. Well, that was me and my new co-host, Mike Benefield. We love all you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us until the next episode. Good night. And goodbye. It reminds me of my favorite poem, which is um, Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a schizophrenic, and so am I.